Swamiji, we were talking about calming the heart's feelings uh, as essential to liberation. Can you go on with that? Well, it's the feelings that make us, that tie us to delusion. It's the feelings that create the waves of separateness. On the ocean of spirit, there is calmness. Then when creation starts, the wave, the wind of maya, of delusion, comes and the surface of the water is, is broken up into waves. And those waves are, everything is vibration. By waves is vibration. So everything exists in a state of vibration. Science has discovered that even the rocks are really only energy in a certain rate of vibration. Now we can say things that a hundred years ago we could not have said, or two hundred years ago. So now we've come to understand even solid physical reality in a much subtler sense. Everything is vibration. Everything is energy. Energy is thought. Thoughts are consciousness. So anyway, we, with our feeling, are the ones who augment those waves. We have to learn to calm them. When we can calm the waves, calm the vortices, the way Patanjali put it, then the uh, mind becomes calm enough to perceive spirit. But as long as there's this thought, I like this, I don't like this, oh, I'm so happy this happened, oh, I'm so destroyed that, <laughs> that this happened, I love this person, I hate that person. As long as we have these reactions, we're always going to be tied to the ego, we're always going to be tied to separateness from God. So we must learn to become calm under all circumstances. Calmness in this sense does not mean apathy. We have to accept everything with joy so that no matter what happens. Now, I remember, and I think I mentioned this a few programs ago, where I was, um, there was a boy, I weighed 107 pounds, I was 13 years old. He weighed 230, he was 15 years old. And most of it was fat, but still a lot stronger than I. And he just decided that he, I had an English accent at the time because I had been living in England and I was born in Romania. But when I came to America, I, it took me a while to get rid of the English accent. Now I don't have an American accent. I don't have an English accent. I have a Korean on the accent. <laughs> <clears throat> but anyway, I, I just speak it the way I think it ought to sound. Anyway, he, he, was, he decided he'd really beat me up and he came in and was whacking the tar out of me. I refused to let it bother me. I had my hand over my head so he couldn't hurt me too badly, but he was panting. He was just in livid fury. He was saying, I'm going to throw you out the window. I'm going to throw you out the window. We were three stories up. I just refused to let it bother me. And somebody said later, how come you didn't help, call for help? I said, I wasn't afraid. Well, that is what I mean by being calm. No matter what happens, don't let it bother you. It'll, no matter what happens, it'll pass. You go to the dentist, it'll pass. He'll you drill you for a while, it'll be painful, but then it'll be gone. Don't let anything bother you. And the way not to let it bother you is simply not to be attached to this body to say that this is not me. And I think that a little pain never hurt anybody. <laughs> I think it's good for people to endure pain and try to feel that they can take it and it doesn't bother them. I know that in school in England, my best friend and I used to try to bite each other's hands to the point where we would uh, <laughs> shout for help and try to reach the point where we weren't affected by it. I think it's a good practice to accept a certain amount of pain and see if you can stand it. Sooner or later you'll see that, that uh, you are not this body. And no matter what happens to you, you can take it. Swamiji, physical pain is one thing, emotional pain is another. Just as important to overcome. When, when people distort, disappoint you, when they betray you, just don't let it disturb you. Give it to God. Say, all right, they have uh, 
it's taken all my money, let it be, something else will happen. That's not so easy. It's harder to overcome that than it is to overcome physical pain. I think I've told the story, but I'll tell it again. There was a man who was an older man, and uh, a young man used to come to him because he enjoyed his wisdom. He said, you're always so peaceful under all circumstances. One day he asked him, what is your secret? And the man said, well, come with me. And he took him into his bedroom. He opened a drawer and took out a very fragile shell. And uh, he said, this is my secret. The young man said, what are you talking about? He said, okay. He said, in 1929, when the stock market crashed, I was a very wealthy man. Overnight, I lost everything. And I thought I had nothing left to live for. And I decided I would commit suicide. And I sent my family away and I went to the ocean and rented a cabin there. And my plan was to go out into the water and let the water take me and I would drown. But as I went into the waves, they threw me back against the shore. And there was a high sea. And I tried again, it was thrown back again. Third or the fourth time I was thrown back onto my knees on the sand. I looked at, I saw in the swirling water around me this fragile shell. And I thought, this shell is much weaker than I am. I could crush it just by, with, a, with my fingers. And yet it has survived a pounding that my body couldn't take. Why? And I realized it was because the shell was going with the current, not trying to go against it. And he said, that's what I've been doing. I've been going against the currents of my life. So I've lost all my money. I haven't lost my life. Let's just see what the currents plan for me. And I've lived a good life since then. I've never become very wealthy, but I've always had enough. And he said, with that I've realized that if I go with the currents, then I'm always protected and always happy. Okay. So this is a very good lesson. Swamiji, many people want to go with those currents and yet they're still hurt and need to forgive someone or some other people in their lives. That's because they have a judgment as to what they think ought to be. And that's what I mean by currents. You think it should be this. And uh, um, we have to accept that whatever comes, whatever comes of itself, let it come. You'll find that you find great freedom in that thought. And specifically, forgiveness of others. Is it possible to do if they're not even alive anymore? Or how do you, how do you create that forgiveness? Well, forgiveness begins with you. It doesn't come from them. So if they're dead or alive, it doesn't really matter. If you remember how, you're, how somebody offended you deeply, maybe stole your girlfriend or your boyfriend away from you, or cheated you, and caused you to lose a great contract or even to go out of business, these are causes of great resentment. But if you just say, what, see that God is what, God did this to me, then there's no question of forgiveness. What comes of itself, let it come. Whatever, however people treat you, just say, this is my karma coming back to me. Karma is a very important principle to understand and accept. It's for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. That's the law of Newton. And it's true on a physical level. It's true even on subtle spiritual levels. That is the law of karma. Whatever you have done is going to come back to you. The way to get out of karma is to get rid of that ego to which all these things are tied. When you've gone this, this direction, then you're going to have to go in it'll have to spring back to you like those little paddle balls with a ball <laughs> tied by a rubber band and you hit it, comes back, hit it, comes back. So that is what, as long as the ego is there, the paddle of your ego, we could say, <laughs> as long as that's there, it'll come back. But if you can cut that cord, if you can cut the cord of ego, then the karma has to be paid somehow, but it doesn't come back to you. People who are highly spiritually advanced, the good that they do doesn't come back to them. And so it comes to their disciples and to people they're trying to help. 
And so their good deeds, they have repercussions too, but they go to many people. Swami, in the story you were telling, the man who lost everything in the stock market on some level had placed his security, his sense of security in money. Yeah. How security is essential, but where should it be placed? What? Well, in God. You know, you, God will take care of you. It's amazing how many miracles people go through all the time and don't even know it. In fact, a proof of God's miraculous power is the simple phenomenon of ice. Every other element, when you subject it to heat, it expands. When you subject it to cold, it contracts. Why doesn't water, when it freezes, contract? If it did, the oceans would be frozen solid. We wouldn't be able to live on this planet. It's the one element I know of that acts in the wrong way, but it's what permits life. I call that a miracle. And I know that in my life there have been countless miracles. Many people, in fact, a friend of mine is gathering stories of people that we know, all of whom have experienced some real miracle in their lives, something that, that was not, you can't account for it in any other way. They gave the thing to God and somehow it worked out. God will take care of you if you go to the source instead of thinking of the effect the outer manifestation. It isn't that God, people who doubt God, who don't, who are atheists, why not give God a chance? Just try it as an experiment, if nothing else. Say, well, let's see if this works. You'll be surprised how amazingly, when you turn to God, things start working in your favor. And when you turn away from Him, things stop working. How would you describe God to an atheist in a way that he could understand or Well, accept. I had an Australian ask me that once in Australia. I said, why do you think of God as the highest potential that you can imagine for yourself? He said, well, I can live with that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imitate the Australian accent very well, but anyway, when we can, when we can feel that Anything that we have that is inspiring us is a part of God. Anything that, is, uh, that depresses us takes us away from God. Then don't worry about whether God exists or not. Go in the direction of that inspiration. Go in the direction of greater peace of mind, kindness, love, happiness. You'll find that with that, it becomes inevitable that sooner or later, you'll know there's something more beyond what you're thinking. There is a God.